is and got daughters and all your friends have babies uh, and when you're in your 30s people start asking you questions and making some assumptions and saying things like oh you're married for seven years are you thinking of starting a family soon how old are you again hmm. my friend was 40 but you shouldn't leave it too long so you've moved to Shoreham are you thinking of settling down Congratulations on the birth of your niece. Does it make you broody? How is it being a godmother? It'll be your turn next. You could just have one. And when you do, you'll understand. You'll know what love is really like. And sleepless nights. And how great to be just the two of you. When did we last have a boozy Friday and a Saturday morning lion? 7.30 a.m. wake up. That's the dream. But seriously though, it's the best thing we've ever done. Call me in five years and we'll have a proper conversation without <laughs> toddler tantrums and cementing porridge and constant bloody pepper pig and push me, push me, push me and swings when I've recovered my stomach muscles and my memories. And I know it's not all about stair gates and snacks and park trips. It's not all about Instagram and NCT and catchment areas. And I know they make you laugh as much as they make you cry. And I know this baby Chino season will soon pass you by. <laughs> and I know they won't always be stroppy and snotty and small, but then they might be sn snotty and stroppy and tall. And you're raising flipping people here, people. This job really is a forever one, so I don't think the decision should be a casual one. But is there something wrong with me for not, right now, wanting this? Am I shirking responsibility, living in the lap of luxury? And even if I did decide that motherhood was for me, there's no guarantee that his sperm and my egg will ever meet. So before you ask me if I'm broody, just pause, because you don't know what stories my womb might be holding. And the thing is, motherhood is for me. Motherhood is part of my story. I create poem babies. Words weave together in my deepest parts, stories shaped by mind and heart that stumble blinking into the light. Sometimes sure, sometimes uncertain, often not without a fight, and I share them with you, not knowing what the reaction will be. Will you think them pretty or challenging or ugly? I doubt you'd say anyways, because most of the time we just try and think of the polite thing to say. I bear marks of mothering under my skin. It stretches every time I reach out to make sure that you're okay. You, my sister, partner, friend, neighbor, when I send you a WhatsApp message, make you a cup of tea, sit you down in the yellow armchair, put something easy on the TV. When I offer you a shoulder for tears, ask you how you're feeling. When I invite you out for a walk on the down, listen to your fears. My breasts might not be saggy yet, but they're good for embracing. My hips are wide and ready for dancing, ready to sweep curves into the night, ready to make bad days and frown lines take flight. I knew I was going to get it right here. <laughs> the marks might not be visible on the surface, but every act of love given and received changes our shape. Because womb present or not, we all mother in our different ways. Leave traces of DNA to all we lay our hands on. <coughs> Nurturing ideas and whispers into being, sometimes with sleepless nights and with groaning. <coughs> Laboring over works, creative, kind or revolutionary, with strength and tenderness and vulnerability. We've all known expansion and contraction the welcome of a new season, and grief for what has been lost. As have you with your three daughters, you with your crying baby, we're all holding on to hope, whether we're feeling full or empty or somewhere in between, whether what we're birthing is obvious or unseen. We need each other's cheers and celebration. We need each other's solidarity and patience and wisdom to keep on sharing our passion, our love, our home, our heart, to create safe spaces for new life to start.
Thank you.